Just look at these ants. Aren't they beautiful? With their hard shaped gaster that looks so similar to the gaster of the Crematogaster ants, these ants are indeed one of the best looking ants out there. And if you want to see how hairy these ants are, just look at this. With all of these straight hairs all over their bodies, these ants look like the porcupine of the ant wall. But not only do these ants have thick hairs that can protect them from their enemies, these ants also have top armored bodies. So they are also called seal ants. But I like to call them seal ants for some other reason. That is for the unique defense strategy of these ants, of which I will be talking in my upcoming videos, where these ants will be facing formidable opponents like the yellow crazy ants and the carabara ants. For today, I will be introducing you to my pet and colony of this beautiful ant species. This is my pet Meranoplos colony. There are few walkers and there is also a queen. And the queen seems to be carrying something in her jaws. It's an egg. These ants have just been moved to a new setup. And with the presence of the queen and her eggs nearby, the walkers immediately start to dig in a nest for her. Meanwhile, the queen leaves her egg and starts exploring her new home. One of the workers comes forward and volunteers to carry the eggs for her, while the rest of the workers continue with their work of nest digging. Now and then, the queen returns to the nest digging site and it appears as if she is closely examining the construction of the nest. But the formicarium is last and the nest digging is taking place at various sites. And the queen is exploring all of them. After exploring every corner of the formicarium, the queen seems to have chosen this place. And soon, a nest is built in here for her. Now all of the nest build seems to be interconnected by fine network of multiple underground tunnels. And yes, one of the nest also contains a male partner for the queen. Now that the digging of the nest was complete, it was now time to feed these ants. I offered them a drop of honey and these ants seemed to love honey. They gathered round the honey drop forming a circle and started drinking the honey greedily. It was such a joyful experience to watch these ants drinking the sweet liquid. It appeared like some of them were also carrying the honey to the queen, who was now resting peacefully inside the nest, probably laying eggs. But I knew that mere honey will not fulfill the diet requirement of the colony. A protein diet is also a must. In the wild, I have seen these ants carrying dead termites to their nest. So I decided to add a few termite worker into the formicarium. However, more than providing nutritious food to the ants, my reason for adding live termite in the formicarium was not only to provide nutritious food to the ant, but I was also rather curious and wanted to know as how these ants who are passive and whose bodies were built more for defense rather than offense were able to kill termites. And what I found was quite astonishing. Instead of attacking the termite with their jaws, these ants seem to attack them with the venom at the tip of their sting. And the venom, it seems, is quite painful to the termite. But though the venom of this Meronoplus ant looked potent enough to knock down the termites for a while, it appeared as if the venom was not having any long-term effect on the termites. But the constant attack of the ant's venom soon began to show its effect on the termite. One of the termites soon became immobile. The queen ant came there, as if to inspect the prey, but soon left on finding the termite is still alive. The second termite walker soon joined his Wunde sister, and this one was aggressive and fiercely attacked the ants. But the top armored body of the ants protected it from the jaws of the termite. But the aggression of the termite was making the ants feel uneasy, and so more and more ants began to pour in at the place of confrontation. And soon one of the ants attacked the aggressor termite and beat his leg. The ant was for a moment able to pin down the termite on the ground. But soon the termite somehow managed to get back on its feet. However, the ant still clinged on to the leg of the termite and refused to let go the leg of the termite. But suddenly the whole colony of ants turned aggressive and started attacking the termites. 
The Tormai sisters tried to fight back bravely, but they were soon overwhelmed by the last number of their enemies, and so ultimately fighting the battle that they could have never won, the two sisters succumbed to their injuries. Now after watching all of this, it is now clear that out there in the wild, where the termite soldiers are also there for protection of the colony, these ants can never hunt down termite of this size. Whatever termite that I had seen being carried away by these ants in the wild must have been either wounded or already dead due to some other reason. The queen did feast on the dead termite. And this might be the last time till it remains with me that it will be feasting on termite. For I do not usually offer termites to my pet ants. So now I will be leaving the queen and the workers to eat their kill peacefully. As for me, now it is time to concentrate on the wild sisters of these ants.